Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to this video. We're going to take the RUCO R11 Remote ID. It's a very new uh, unit. just came out this month in July of 2024. And you'll like it as a remote ID. It's small. The weight is less than a half an ounce. It has a self-contained battery. And the price right now, July 2024, is $40. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm. In this video, I'm going to give an overview and discussion of the Roku R111 Remote ID Module. This video is being filmed on July 26, 2024. The Roku Remote ID is a very new product. It was just introduced this month in July of 2024. As this is some initial impressions of that unit. Remember, the purpose for Remote ID, a new rule from the FAA that came into full effect in March of 2024, it does two things. It provides location of drones, RC aircraft, and the location of where that drone took off or presumably the pilot is. And this is a new thing, and it applies to all small unmanned uh, vehicles flying in the national airspace system, whether they're drone quadcopters, RC model airplanes, or helicopters. One thing I want to point out, this company is Ruko, dot net r-u-k-o do not confuse this with roku r-o-k-u roku is a american technology company about 3.5 billion dollars based out of california you're probably familiar with the roku streaming services on netflix and tvs this is ruko r-u-k-o dot net and later on in the video we'll go through their very nice website uh, ruko is a company that develops um, drones now remote id and robotic toys this video we do, um, broke it up into seven chapters. You can uh, hover down on the timeline to go to a specific chapter if you want to jump ahead. Let me give an overview of those chapters right now. The very first one will be an overview of the Roku R11 Remote ID module, just the, the top level view of it. Next, I'll go to some basics of Remote ID. This will be a summation of a lot of stuff that's happened over the last couple of years with Remote ID. It isn't important because some pilots viewing this video do not need to purchase this module because it'll be built into the drone. I'll explain that. Recreational commercial pilots so you have a, a good understanding of remote ID and where you're going to need it if you do need a remote ID module. I'll next go over the specifics of the remote ID module. We'll take a look at the very complete and comprehensive instruction manual that comes with the um, a Roku uh, Remote ID module to include some very nice videos that explain how to use it, how to set it up with your smartphone. I'll then show you the FAA's Declaration of Compliance uh, website. You can see where the Roku um, Remote ID module is certified by the FAA. I'll show you also a way to locate your model if it goes down using the Remote ID module. It sends out a signal the displays on a map on your smartphone tied to the um, application. And finally, we'll show you where you can buy the drone. And again, this is being filmed July 26, 2024. The um, Remote ID module is listed for $40, which is a, a very attractive price point. This is an unboxing of what you get with the uh, Ruko R11 Remote ID. Uh, this is a very nice box. It comes in the very complete owner's manual that we'll go through in the video. And you see how simple it is. This is a unit itself. It's all self-contained with a battery. So you just simply charge it, turn it on, and install it. The recharging cable. And then the rest of this stuff is just mounting things for the unit. Uh, with the zip ties, this device here is a Velcro. Uh, that's everything that comes in the box. So this is an overview of the Ruko unit itself. And it's just got a few switches and we'll cover it in more detail with a better um, uh, picture from the instruction manual. But basically you just turn it on and the lights come on and tell you what's going on. Green is good. Red means something's happening. And it's pretty easy to look at the um, diagram to figure out what's going on. The charging port, then a setting. That's all you need for uh, this unit. There's no, no assembly or anything you have to do. Remember, this unit can go on any model that needs a remote ID module. It doesn't have to go on a Ruko project, uh, project. You build your own drone, you build your RC airplane, it'll be fine. You can see the small size. The weight is less than half an ounce. And the other key thing that's nice is it has its own battery. You don't need to plug it into your receiver or an onboard battery to power it. 
So the real trick is just finding out a way to mount it, Velcro, zip ties, hot glue. That's all you need to get this system up and running. Let's take a look now at the Ruco website. It's a very good website, uh, just a lot of information to include a blog and some very useful videos that will walk you through the setup, installation, and use of the Remote ID module. This is a look at the Ruco website. Uh, they, they do a, a variety of things from drones, robotic toys, and of course now the new Remote ID module. A very nice website. We'll go to the top and we'll take a look at the Remote ID module. This is what we'll be reviewing here. You can buy it here at this site. There are pictures of the module. You see the weight less than half of an ounce, uh, five hours of battery time, 40 minutes to charge. And it's very easy to mount. You just have to stick it onto the drone and we'll go through the owner's manual. And there is a useful blog that has some good information on it. Here is the blog on the RUCO, some initial notes on it. Again, this is being filmed the end of July 2024. It was just introduced in July, so it's still pretty new to the market. Along with the website are some very useful um, instruction manuals. This is one of the binding. So you only do this once. You have to tell the FAA that you have this remote ID and log it onto their drone zone website. So there's a serial number and uh, instructions on how to get to the drone zone website. Uh, turning on the power switch for three seconds, good indication of the setting switch, what the lights are going to look like when you do all this. Again, very helpful information because you don't do this all the time. It'll tell you to turn on the phone's Bluetooth, uh, go to that app you've downloaded, uh, allow it to connect on that, type in the serial number. Again, it's just a very good step-by-step -step process to let the FAA know that this remote ID module is registered to your account. So when they have to match it up, if there's a violation or an investigation of any sort, they know who to go to with that information. Let's discuss briefly the um, background and basics of the remote ID. The idea of remote ID whereby drones, radio control model aircraft, you know the location of the model and where it took off, had been in the works for a while with the FAA and Congress. As more and more drones are flying in the commercial um, in the national airspace system and commercial operators think Amazon and FedEx want more uh, freedom of drone operations, there has to be some way of establishing the position, and remote ID is a very first step in that. Remote ID does not work with air traffic control. Their controllers don't know anything about it. It's for law enforcement, the FAA, again, to know the location of that drone and who is flying the drone. The, there's a lot of discussion on the remote ID ruling. The final ruling came into full effect on March 16th, 2024. This is being filmed in July of 2024. So everybody has to fly with a remote ID. For the purposes of you as a model airplane pilot, if your drone is over is 250 grams or over, that's about 8.8 .8 ounces, you need remote ID. The only exception is if you're flying in a FRIA, which is an FAA recognized identification area, a unique, a unique area where you don't need remote ID. But generally speaking, if your drone weighs over 8.8 .8 ounces, 250 grams or more, you will need remote ID. Now, in line with the remote ID discussions, there's two types of drone or RC model airplane pilots, commercial and recreational. If you're a commercial drone pilot or RC model airplane pilot, you know who you are. It's a fairly difficult test. It's a certificate issued by the FAA. I have my Part 107 certificate. You know the rules on that. And just Briefly, for those watching the videos, if you are a commercial drone pilot, model airplane pilot, you need a remote ID module for each airplane that you own. Now, for everybody else who is a recreational pilot, you just fly for fun, you still need remote ID, unless you're flying in a free up, but you only need one remote ID model for all of your RC model airplanes. If you have 30 planes and drones, one module swapped between the uh, drones and airplanes will suffice to meet the remote ID requirement. Just talk for a moment about the FRIAs, the FAA Recognized Identification Area. The FRIA was a compromise between the FAA and um, the Academy of Model Aeronautics as the remote ID ruling was being discussed. There's about 1,800 FRIAs um, in the United States. They're associated primarily with AMA flying sites, some educational institutions, 
The boundaries of the FRIAs are known to the FAA. They're plotted on a map. The bottom line is when you're flying your RC model recreationally in a FRIA, you do not need any remote ID at all. You simply fly as before because you have to keep visual sight of your model and the FAA knows you're within the FRIA boundaries. That is a reasonable compromise of the remote ID. So again, if you have a drone, RC model airplane, helicopter, 250 grams or more, and you're flying outside of a FRIA, you need um, remote ID uh, for your airplane. Now, the one thing, other thing I want to mention for the drone pilots, there was another variation of this whole remote ID um, uh, ruling that came into effect on December 16th, 2022. That's almost three, uh, almost two years ago. Every drone sold in the United States had to come with a remote ID installed. This is called standard remote ID. You'll have to check with your drone manufacturer, but if you have a newer drone purchased within the past year and a half, it probably has uh, the standard remote ID built in. And a very good example, let me look at my notes, is the Ruko VNIX 7. And you can see from the picture that the FAA remote ID module is built in. So check on that. You may already have the remote ID built in, in which case you don't need the module. So let's take a look at some of the specifications of the remote ID module. You don't have to build anything. It just comes out of the package ready to go. There's an on off switch. There are some setting switches to put it into bind modes. There's a charging port for the self-contained battery. So let's take a look at a diagram of the module and some of the light patterns so you can see the uh, thought process between how the remote ID module is set up. It's, it's very user-friendly. The module is quite simple to operate. You have your indicator lights, you on-off switch, a setting switch, and then the charging port. The lights are indicate charging indicator, working indicator, low battery setting indicators, as shown. Let's take a look now at the FAA's website and we can see the declaration of compliance. This is, uh, if you will, the graduation certificate that the various modules uh, have complied with the FAA specifications to build a module. And you can see there's a lot of them. There's uh, over 43 pages of, um, in this um, declaration of co uh, compliance website. Easiest way to get to this page, simply Google FAA UAS declaration of compliance. You can see there is a button to view the public declaration of, Dec declaration of compliance list. There's about 43 pages of various manufacturers who have their DOCs issued towards them. We'll simply go to the search function and type in our drone, which is R111. That'll show the um, declarations of compliance that uh, Ruku has. We can click on it. It's July of 2024, and there's your graduation certificate. You are compliant. One other thing I want to point out is a lot of people ask, well, what's the range of the various remote ID modules? And the answer to that is it's, it's not really known. It's not required by the manufacturers to state the range. For this module, the range is probably around 500 to 800 meters. It's a broadcast location and identification information uh, from the module of the airplane that's flying on. The reason that can vary a lot, it depends on atmospheric conditions, the electromagnetic environment, but more importantly, for the means of compliance and the declaration of compliance by the FAA, there is no minimum range that must be met by the module. It's just some technical specifications of what it's supposed to do to meet the FAA requirement to be a qualified remote ID module. Let's take a look now at the very complete instruction manual that comes with this. A very complete, easy to use uh, user manual, um, a good uh, scanner, uh, quick read codes to get to various sections, table, uh, table of contents, how to get the app for Android and Apple, make sure you charge everything up. Your serial number is on your remote ID module. We've discussed before the binding information. Again, they take you through all this. Uh, just very helpful to get you up and running with some tasks that you haven't done too often. Now I'd like to take a look at a video that I got from the Amazon uh, website of a user of the module that used it to locate a drone that he lost in flight. It went down in the middle of the woods using the um, map feature on the app on his smartphone. He managed to find the drone in the middle of the woods. Uh, really quite interesting. So this is my quadcopter. It's in the middle of this, this woods here. And I just used my remote ID module to find it when I was flying over these trees, it lost power and fell down through the trees 
and landed right here. There's no way I ever would have found it. So where can you buy this? Uh, two sources are the Ruku website itself. It is for sale. You can also go to the Amazon website. Um, same price. Uh, again, this is in July of 2020, uh, 2024. It's listed as $40. There's also a $5 discount. I don't know the specifics, but $40 is a pretty good price point. Also, you can see the rating from Amazon. It's about 4.7 out of 5 stars. About 500 uh, or more have been bought uh, since it was listed. Again, it's a fairly new product. There's not a lot of information or history for the um, comments and things like that, but two sources you can get it are Amazon and the website itself. Thanks for watching this video. I am very impressed with this Roku R111 Remote ID module. It looks like the right unit, the right time, uh, less than half an ounce, small size, self-contained battery, can go on any airplane. I, I think it's worth your consideration if you need a remote ID model for your RC model flying. Good luck and we'll see you in future videos.